Madhouse is Monster, an anime series that is basically a one-to-one -one equivalent of Naoki Urasawa's manga of the same name, is in my view one of the most underrated anime of the past 20 years. For how insanely brilliant of a show this is, it is hardly ever talked about in discussions about some of the best series of recent times. Monster is incredible. It's a sociological study about human nature, a character piece, a 74 episode essay on psychology, and a brilliant story heavy with symbolism and dark themes. Is it flawless? Definitely not, as it does have some plot conveniences and pacing issues. But for those who can appreciate a slow, methodical, multi-layered, and deep dramatic mystery, it is well worth a watch. Monster tackles so much through its 74 episodes that I can't hope to do it justice. In short, it's simultaneously a twisting, mind-numbingly complex tale, and at the same time a simple story about people. It is an interesting narrative in that it finds a contemporary and modern way to tackle some themes and moral issues that have been topics of debate since the caveman days. Uh, probably. At the end of the day, and this is just my opinion, as always, I distinguished two overarching themes in the series that took prominence above everything else. The theme of identity and the nature of the duality of humanity. Now these are not the only themes in the series, not by a long shot. Monster also covers themes of perseverance, personal evolution, redemption, existentialism and nihilism, destiny, and much more. However, the aforementioned two themes are the ones that I thought had the biggest impact on the narrative of Monster. Identity is a concept that many struggle with. Over the past hundreds and hundreds of years, identity has been debated and studied and examined intensely. There are philosophies and religions based around the entire idea of identity and purpose. It is not a very distinct theme due to how many works of fiction tackle the idea of identity, but its very emotional and personal nature makes it a timeless and extremely important theme. Every single individual, at one point or another, reflects on or questions their place in the world. In the end, one thing we can all agree on is that identity is important very important. So when you take away someone's identity, both as a person and as an emotional being, the consequences could be tragic, and Monster explores this concept amazingly well. The idea of identity is explored through many of Monster's plot mechanisms, but the most prominent of these is the orphanage, and I say that in quotations, of 511 Kinderheim. This organization was more of a factory than an orphanage, a factory whose goal was to create the perfect, emotionless human tools. It was a reprogramming institution concerned with providing the German government with the best possible soldiers. Using brainwashing and psychological desensitization, the directors at 511 Kinderheim were able to strip these children of all essence of emotional identity. One such experiment would consist of a child being physically beaten until they showed no emotion. The children forgot about love, respect, and friendship, and their names were taken away from them. They lost all sense of self and soon grew to hate each other. This is when Johan entered the situation and was enrolled in the orphanage, and placing such a manipulative and sadistic boy into such a high-tension environment led to the complete destruction of 511 Kinderheim. By taking away all sense of identity and decency from these kids, the directors of the orphanage left them with nothing but hate in their hearts. All Johan had to do was stoke the flame. Dozens of children were killed that day, as Johan simply watched the residents of 511 Kinderheim slaughter each other, thriving in this damning indictment on humanity. The consequences of 511 Kinderheim can also be seen in one of its former residents, Wolfgang Grimmer. Grimmer is one of my favorite characters in the show, but unfortunately, the guy has had a miserable existence. 
The psychological effects of the treatment stayed with him after he left the orphanage. As such, he never felt emotions until near the end of his life. Here we see a man who has had his identity and sense of self stolen from him, and the consequences are absolutely tragic. Grimmer lives, grows up, gets married, has a child, and then has to bury that child after its untimely death, and he feels nothing. Nothing at all. He felt no happiness in marrying, and only did so because he was supposed to. He felt no joy at the birth of his son. And while the grief of having to bury one's own child is a type of horror I do not even want to think about, the only thing worse than that is wanting to grieve and feel, but not having the emotional capacity to do so. I'll get more into Grimmer in a later video, but suffice it to say the horrors of losing one's identity is illustrated through this sad, sad story. Knowing your place in the world and knowing who you are at heart is absolutely essential to us as humans. Without it, we are lost. At its heart, Monster is primitive. It may take place in the modern age, but the essence of Monster's story is an idea that dates back to prehistory. At the end of the day, the show is about the philosophies of two men, Kenzo Tenma and Johann Liebert, one believing in the good of humanity and one not believing in humanity at all. And it also tackles all of the shades of grey within this spectrum. Stories like this have been written since stories existed. So with Monster, we essentially have classic, age-old themes and moral issues being addressed through a brilliant narrative. Are these themes really unique at all? No, but the way they're presented is. Monster is a methodical, deliberate piece of art that demonstrates its themes through intense character study via a contemporary crime thriller premise as we try to put together the pieces of this unbelievable plot. Johan, Tenma, Nina, Grimmer, Ava, Lunge, Dr. Heinemann, some of the more secondary characters we see, like Richard Braun, Jan Suk, or Dr. Gillen. All of these characters display differing viewpoints and philosophies, none of which are treated as better or worse than one another by the story. The eternal question that this show tackles is quite a timeless one. Is humanity inherently good or evil? Monster somehow manages to both sit on the fence and be bold with its message. At the end of the day, the world is filled with evil, but it's not all bad. Throughout this winding series full of darkness and decay, there was undoubtedly some light and hope that stayed strong until the end. Some may criticize this thematic view because Monster doesn't really commit to an overarching answer to humanity, but can we really definitively answer any questions about something as complex as humanity? I always found the last scene of the series to be symbolically profound. Johan, the epitome of human darkness and tragedy, mysteriously escapes his hospital bed. He's not arrested or killed. He lives on. It's an appropriately dark ending to a dark show. Despite how upbeat the last episode was, and how everyone had moved on, Johan, representing the humanity's grimness, lives on. I took this as a thematic message. That even though there is undoubtedly good in a lot of individuals on this earth, we all have a lingering darkness inside of us that may be buried deep or not so deep, that always lives on, like Johan lived on. It's not a conclusive or final ending tied up in a neat little bow, but when you think about it, that was never the type of show that Monster was going to end up being. In the end, a prominent thematic battle occurred in this series. One cliché yet eternally relevant. What is the true nature of man? Johan thought that the value of a human life was nothing, while Tenma believed that all life was precious. Johan represented cynicism, darkness, and nihilism, and Tenma showed morality, light, and justice, though even his ideals were shaken as the story progressed. One of Johann's goals was to prove to the world and to himself that humanity is exactly as he perceives it, that is to say, broken and corrupted, by turning the best man he's ever seen into a killer. 
Johan almost proved his ideals correct by taking the most morally good, just man you could find and almost turning him into a murderer. He believed that Tenma would kill him, and Tenma himself believed that he would kill Johan, which would have proved once and for all that humanity is inherently violent and dark. But in the end, Tenma couldn't do it, and proved that humanity isn't all the way gone just yet. I loved this ideological battle that remained constant for Monster's length, because despite how cut and dry the two men's philosophies proved to be, it remained entirely engaging all the way through. I personally believe that had the story of Monster been extended for another 10 years, Tenma still would never have killed Johan. It just wasn't in him. It wasn't in his nature. As a side note, the fact that a random drunk ended up being the one to shoot Johan was a plot point that I was initially lukewarm on, but grew to absolutely love. Reality is chaos and spontaneity. Random acts contribute to bigger acts at the snap of a finger. This drunk that shot Johan had absolutely minimal story relevance, yet he was the one that did it. Not Tenma, not Nina, not Johan himself. And this random drunk shooting Johan was absolutely perfect, because it was sublime at capturing the random entropy that is life, and showing the far-reaching consequences of our initial actions. Monster tackles nature and nurture, evil and good, action and consequence, and in my opinion, states that the culmination of all of these aspects, and not any single one aspect, is what truly makes people the way they are. It makes an extremely strong case for humans being entirely multi-layered beings. Where there is dark, there is light, and vice versa. There are always two sides of the coin. Through its intelligent plot, themes, and characters, Monster demonstrates that humanity is dark, humanity is good, and humanity is unbelievably complex. And that is what makes it special. Due to its dark and grim tone, Monster is by far the least anime-like anime that I have ever seen. What I mean by this is that so many individual elements in Monster integrate together in a way that makes the show incredibly realistic and believable. There is no magic in this show. There is no fan service. There are no drawn out battles. No shonen protagonists or blushing tsundere's. Only people. These people can be just, righteous, upbeat, and morally good, but they can also be pure evil, selfish, and absolutely broken. It is incredibly realistic, and this adds an element of grimness that is not common in the media to Monster. The atmosphere is helped by one of the best openings to an anime that I've ever seen in terms of setting a mood for the show. At the beginning of every episode, we witness this muted, ominous opening. We see a disheveled Tenma skulking around. The camera cuts at strange times and shifts in and out of focus, and the music is rhythmic but incredibly unsettling. All in all, this opening is uneasy and eerie and brilliant. It fits the show perfectly, so major props to Madhouse for that. This realistic atmosphere is also aided by the art style of the show and manga. The character models are very detailed, with more lines and details in the face than you usually see in the medium for added realism. The color palette that Madhouse uses is also hugely important to the show's atmosphere. In times of comfort or safety, it is very warm, but during some of the darker moments, it's quite muted with lots of dull grays, browns, and blacks, and not much brightness or boldness, which contributed superbly to the dull and bleak nature of the show. I should also pay small tribute to the understated music of Monster, which was at times so subtle that you didn't even notice it, but at the same time was a huge contributing factor to its atmosphere and tone. This is all just my perception, of course, but an interesting thing about Monster that I noticed is that the tone subtly yet clearly shifts at around the halfway point in the show. Before the end of the Munich University arc, in which Johan escapes death again after burning down the library, Monster was a bit more direct and blunt with communicating its themes. It was still subtly and meticulously done, but it was relatively cut and dry, 
as in not much interpretation was needed to piece together the moral issues and themes that the show was tackling. After the Munich University arc, where the story expands deeper into Prague and other parts of Europe, the show becomes much more poetic and abstract. We get into some metaphysical stuff as we get closer and closer to discovering the truth behind things. There is a lot more symbolism, ambiguous themes and interpretation associated with this second act of the show, which I felt was really intriguing as we begin to learn about Grimmer's story and dive into some of the Red Rose Mansion stuff before the grand finale. This second act of the show changes things up by encouraging the watcher to think a little bit deeper than before to prize things out from the story. Perhaps I'm just insane and completely alone in recognizing this style shift, but it's something I thought was evident as the show moved through its middle act. Despite this style and tone shift, the atmosphere remains constant in the show. Dark, gritty, and deeply engaging. This atmosphere, established through so many elements, is absolutely key in drawing in the viewer and keeping them engaged throughout this tale. There are exceptions, of course, but most shows tend to be either plot or character driven. In a show with as complex a plot as Monster, you would think that it would be plot driven, but in my opinion, there is so much emphasis on character exploration and development that I cannot call this show anything but a character piece. While Tenma and Johan are absolutely the linchpins of the plot, and I do think that Monster is focused on these two men, I think it is also about more than that. Monster is about all kinds of different people, different personalities, different personal journeys, and Monster takes its time to deeply explore these people. As such, it is definitely slow. The show does start very strong, and establishes the conflict very well from the beginning, but by no means is it a fast-paced thriller. It depends greatly on the tone it sets and the characters introduced to keep the watcher intrigued, rather than action scenes or bombastic drama. Monster is very subtle, it takes its time, everything is very deliberate. Sometimes we don't see a primary character for 10 episodes, but the narrative always establishes great characterization in new characters and irrelevance in these new tales to keep us engaged. Now while this unique style of point of view storytelling and pacing is much to the story's benefit, as it does piece together the narrative beautifully, I'll be the first to admit that it was not done perfectly. Sometimes things just went a little bit too slow. Some episodes in the build-up to the climax in Ruinheim were just agonizingly snail-paced, and while I do believe that every single episode contributed to the plot, characters, or setting in some way, these episodes did feel exceptionally fillerish relative to the rest of the show, especially due to their placing in the build-up to the final conflict. However, this is just a small little nitpick I have. The pacing is, for the most part, phenomenal. Monster is a 74 piece puzzle. Each episode is its own puzzle piece that adds to the overall narrative. In a puzzle, each new piece has the potential of completely changing the way the developing picture can be viewed. This is just like Monster. It is slow and methodical and nuanced, but at the end of the day, the plot and overall story is a puzzle that cannot be properly understood until all of the episodes are over and all of the pieces are in place. I can understand why this is frustrating to some viewers, as the thirst for answers in this story can be unquenchable at times. But this slow style makes sense, and it is all worth it at the end when you sit back and reflect on the story. Now, the characters in Monster are nothing short of absolutely spectacular. They're layered and deep, with each having some sort of impact on the narrative. Each has a unique take on the world and communicates this throughout the story. Everything in the show hinges on its characters. The plot is fantastic, but it's structured in a way that requires the characters to be dynamic and deep. The themes are brilliant, but they are only portrayed properly through the characters. The setting, tone, and atmosphere only set the mood through the story. Now I'm not going to get into the characters here because I definitely have some analysis planned for the future. But let's just say that the characters of Monster, and the ways they develop through their personal journeys, are the show's biggest strength. 
at least in my opinion. At the time of this video, Monster is easily in my top 5 anime of all time. It is a magnificently written tale, rooted in important ideas and themes. The plot is exceptional, the themes are relevant, personal, and emotional, the tone and atmosphere are beautifully grim and dark, and the characters, along with their arcs, are simply fascinating to behold. Monster is right up there with stories like Fate Zero, Hunter x Hunter, and AMC's Mad Men when it comes to establishing characters, slowly developing them over time, and peeling back the layers of their essence of self. All of these elements are not nearly the sum of their parts, however, if they cannot combine to form a cohesive whole and a memorable story. Monster has no such problem. It integrates all of these elements together seamlessly to form a story about tragedy, darkness and corruption, but also love, purpose and triumph. It studies the personal themes of identity and humanity with sophistication and style, and manages to be a dark and grim tale while maintaining an emotional center, a heart, and a soul. It is one of my personal favorite stories, one that got me emotionally invested, intellectually stimulated, and one that taught me a little bit about myself. Above all, Naoki Urasawa's Monster is simply a special, special story.